Creek. Birds. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You guys are the best for tuning in whenever you are. I do appreciate it a lot, especially all the nice folks in the comments. The other day I was having a rough one, but good morning. It's early. We are here right at the heart entrance to Main City Park here in the city of Gresham, Oregon. That away leads to Portland down the old Springwater Trail, which is an old railroad line converted into a bike path. And today, normally we go into Portland. We're heading east. That's right. We're just going to take a little cruise, see how far we can get. I know Boring, Oregon is, oh, four or five, ten miles from here. I'm not sure. We're going to see how far we can make it. It's supposed to be nice. Got a lunch packed in the backpack. The Creeper Cruiser is ready to rock. I hope you are too. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good day. Today I thought we would head east and see how far we can get before the weather gets too hot down the spring water trail here and they've kind of mapped it out here a little bit so it should be good we are going to see how far we can make it as of right now we're right here at the entrance like i said at the main city park and we're basically just gonna creep all the way down here past another park on roberts all the way down here past the old brickworks building which we did a vlog on oh gosh about four or five years ago it's an old brick company we'll probably go by there well not inside because we're just going to keep creeping on the trail but there's a lot of things to see some historic homes and uh, this is actually a campground at one point soon after settling in gresham in the 1850s pioneer families gathered for two weeks each summer to socialize, they camped in a grove of trees that stood at the present-day Main and Powell Streets, dubbed the Campground. And there's some folks there enjoying their time at the campground. So yeah, we're just going to creep in as far as we can make it, and it's going to be a good day. Creeper Cruiser's ready to rock. It is an absolutely beautiful morning. It feels great so far, and I'm riding no hands because the camera... Well, I guess I could ride one hand, but I might have to lose the hoodie here in a bit. The reason why I brought the backpack is because I got a lunch packed as well. So yeah, just stunning views out this way. We don't ever really get out this way. So just going to enjoy the day and see what we can see. All right, as the sign states, about 4.3 miles. So I was close. I thought it was a little bit longer, but we're off and right back in there sits I think it still is a brick company but at one point it was an old brickyard I think I still I think they still do make bricks I just can't remember but basically all the bricks that were you know manufactured there were used to create most of the churches and buildings in and around Gresham in Portland. Pretty neat. Looks like they put some new placards in too since the last time. Oh, they did. These are nice. So, looks like nestled along Johnson's Creek. A summer retreat planted roots here in 1919. Portland resident and former mayor of Vancouver, Washington. He joined he was joined by other Portland leaders, Charles Russell, George Rogers, and Lewis Clark, as well as author Arthur Underhill, an East Coast landscape architect who designed the 20-acre development. Looks like they're enjoying swimming in the creek, which is just, you know, right down in there. Established by E.G. Crawford, a banker. They built dams, spillways, ponds, bridges, and stacked rock walls. Due to the Great Depression and deaths of the original partners, Amelside dissolved by 1940. Invasive plants took hold, gardens declined, and houses fell. Over the years, historic flooding damaged the house. Wow, you can see it there. 
And if you notice these bricks here, right before this little informational placard stanchion, just a red clay brick, not at all Columbia Brickworks in response to demand, the company once manufactured over 100 types, 150 types of bricks in different colors and shapes. And that plant sat right, well, I think they are still working on it. I don't know if they, yeah, it looks like they still manufacture bricks. And here's some designs of those bricks right here. Yeah, we did a vlog on the Olbrich family. Founded the business in 1906. And most of the businesses that required bricks in the Portland area relied on them. Yeah, it still sits back here. I think we got back in there a couple summers ago and kind of toured it. And there was really not much left of the old brickyard. But yeah, pretty neat. This thing needs, this thing is in desolate repair. But uh, all right, we're gonna keep moving on down the trail. All right, just had a little drink of water. Probably could take another one actually. Here's where the trail connects and we're gonna keep heading that way east. But I also noticed throughout all these back roads, these old hot rods. I think we saw these a couple of years back, kind of all rusted out. But I love that kind of stuff. Seeing that old truck and the old hot rods. Pretty neat, man. All right, moving on. All right, just made it here to the Boring Station Trailhead, which we visited. Gosh, I gotta go back and look. Seems like it was just a few years ago, but time goes by so fast. I think this is the same info that we saw talking about all the train lines. The Estacada and Casadero train leaves from the east approach from the Morrison Bridge every two hours later. You're whirled rapidly through a fine suburb and farm country with grain fields, orchards, sock patches, berry farms, chicken ranches. The line runs into new, count, new country where the land is being cleared for new homes. And that was from the Oregon Journal, July 18th of 1909. Kind of showing where the old train lines came through. The electric trolley has stopped at the Boring Station in 1908. Popular with sightseers and commuters, the trains ran every two hours to and from Portland as the historic gateway to Mount Hood. And here it is in the 1900s. Would have sat just right over here. And then here's some folks. Wow, puller cars were used for special occasions like this exclusive Casadero excursion party in 1906. They started in 1892 and brought picnickers and others to Boring, which we're gonna do next. I'm still gonna explore a little bit. Wow, here's what it looked like in 1980. It was still actually standing, obviously. Very dilapidated looking. Pretty cool though. And I think if I can remember, there's like a, yeah, old railroad crossing sign down here and even a little nod to the old train line with the little kids park here. Looking like a train. Pretty dang cool. Then we got the boring little station here with the train. one of the largest stations on the entire Portland Railway Light and Power Company system. The, burning, the building burnt in the late 1920s and was replaced by a much stroller, smaller structure. Got the train there and the little station kind of mimicking that. 
I like that they kind of salvaged this old train crossing sign. That's all right, just here on 282nd Avenue, we just kind of left the Springwater Trail. And I believe if I did my homework correctly, this will take us up kind of closer to Sandy. I don't know if we're going to make it that far. But yeah, it's uh, absolutely stunning. Let's see how far we can keep going. Biking down the highway at this point. And from what I'm seeing is Sandy's about five miles from here. But I think I'm going to try and double back and head over that way. This is kind of sketchy, but I think we can cross here and then I only have to cross over there and I think there's another little connection over there. So we're gonna cut through here and cross because I don't want to have to go all the way back around. I kind of messed up. So I want to explore over here. All right, we made it. That was super sketchy. I had to cross the highway and I'm getting my shoe all muddy. So I'm gonna try and find a hose and see if I can at least hose my foot down. But we made it here right off of 212 sits an old style drive-in where you would pull right up and now it's back. And they even have the old relics of when the train ran through here years ago. This was a restaurant called Ashley's that sat right here. I think it's now a pizza place, hence the sign. But yeah, this was all abandoned last time we came out here and now it looks like we got Sammy's Burgers and Shakes. And this is pretty dang cool because it's like that old school, you know, drive up where you would pull right in and pick your burger. I'm not sure if folks actually came out and, oh yeah, they even have pictures of the old Ashley's here still, which is pretty cool. Kind of some relics. I think that's the original sign back in there, or maybe on the other side. But yeah, this is cool. They got burgers, desserts, shakes. And this was gonna be something else and it kind of never never panned out. But now it looks looking nice. They got all these outdoor seats, a little fire pit. This is great, man. And I just love the style of it too. Open 24 hours, so if you guys are out this way, come get you a, a burger and a malt at the old school drive-thru. Oh yeah, that's right. This was the A&W at one point as well. So I like that they've inserted all these pictures through here on the old call boxes too. That's pretty dang cool. Let's see if there's one on this side. Some folks just kind of touring the countryside. But yeah, man, this is great. They got the old school malts, cheeseburgers. There's the train, the trolley that we saw earlier, the electric trolley. And yeah, there's the old Ashley's and the A&W. Yeah, these are neat. I'm really stoked that they incorporated all these old school pictures. Yeah, at one point you could come up here to Heidi's and you could ride, there was like a little train that went around. That's why I showed you guys those tracks. You could actually sit on like a little tiny train and it would take you all around here. And I believe that's now Country Coffee. And there's a Chevron back here. And then the, the new place. And I also like this van here. This is dang cool. Old school bus. Kind of cargo van with the big piece on there. Wow, that is neat the big skelly skull man that thing is neat isn't it yeah that thing is wild the old metro that is cool death by dessert yeah I like that these have all these old call boxes still you'd be able to pull right in here and I think when it was the Ashley's they'd have folks come out on roller skates and bring you your food. But it look, it's looking great. Oh yeah, there's the old original sign there. And this bus is so cool, man. Yeah, it's fun to come up here and explore. I don't think I'm gonna really go too much farther because it's pretty much all riding on the highway and I wanna play it safe. But we are gonna creep back over in here behind this coffee shop is another cool spot I wanna show you guys. 
Yeah, I just noticed they got all these on this side too. So it's got the whole like layout of the old Heidi's, which I'm not sure if it was Ashley's or Heidi's first, but nonetheless, they've definitely uh, kept most of these old historic photos. Oh, here's the train right here. So yeah, here's the train. And I believe the tracks, you can kind of see them where they kind of looped around. And then I think they ran all the way down here. There might be some remnants of them back down in here as well. You can kind of see maybe where the old train line came like right through here. That is so cool. Yeah, this place has got a ton of history. I love it though. I love that they took all those, or you know, took the time to put all those historical pictures up. That is neat. Let's go over here. There's one more on this one too. Got the sign here now representing all the different things, including the Bigfoot Center. And then present day. I think these were inside Ashley's too, these big spoons and forks. And then of course the old from the Swiss Village. Pretty cool man. This is great. Got the old school tile floor. This may have been inside Ashley's as well too. It kind of looks like that old school interior. Could be wrong, but that's cool if it is. Yeah, I think a lot of the old Swiss Swiss village. Yeah, so here's the old tracks. You can actually follow them like all the way up here. So that little train would basically take you all the way through here. This is now a pub, but I do like the looks of this place. It's very cool looking. Yeah, and the trail like the kind of like tracks like end right there. But yeah, you've been able to ride that train all the way through here. And we visited here a couple years ago. And it's been quite some time. But a friend of mine, Cliff, who is an avid Bigfoot hunter, or watcher, however you would call it, has the North American Bigfoot Museum, which is now fully open. Last time we were here, they were just now kind of opening. He's got the big... Yeti or Bigfoot right here. That is so cool. It's got the wind socks up there, the Yeti and the Bigfoot. Somebody did a great job on this. They got the one inside too that is just so cool. Man, he is no joke. And look at those feet. <laughs> they don't call you that for nothing. But yeah, with all the woods and stuff out here, I mean, just lush. There's no reason to believe there isn't one. I definitely fully believe him. We're not going to go in today just because I do got to get back to the creeper cave here shortly. That is pretty dang cool, man. See the giant. He's got a little bit more information up here. We'll walk over here real quick and check this out. Yeah, this is just like just getting open when we last time we're here. Ooh, I like these lamps too. Those are cool. Big the foot would be proud. So yeah, very neat. We'll definitely have to come back here and do the full full tour. Last time we were here, it was just the little front section. Ooh, there's even like a little dinosaur down here guarding the place. <laughs> so yeah, it's got all the tracking devices and all the different pictures, all the different artifacts. So we'll definitely come back and talk to my good buddy Cliff. I'm not even sure if they're open. I haven't even looked. But this area is so cool. You can come up, get a burger, check out all the old history of Ashley's and the Swiss Village. And I believe this was a pizza place at one point too. Hot Shots Pizza. Looks like it's a bar now. And come visit Bigfoot. And he also has, I talked to him a couple years back at the Moda Center. They had a Bigfoot night and the blazers just recently had a new mascot which was a bigfoot and cliff came with a demonstration of all of his artifacts and stuff and he i was laughing with him because he showed me the bigfoot butt print he actually has a butt print of bigfoot 
but this area is just so cool. And I love the look of this place too, it's kind of different looking. Yeah, glad to come up here. All right, we just gotta get back now. It was sketchy getting up here. We might go back, try and go back a different route. Got a hot rod pulling in right now. Nice, dude. It's a good spot. Man, that thing is sweet, man. What a good spot. I was just talking about how cool it was like to be able to pull your hot rod in here and get a hamburger at the old school spot. This is neat, man. It's got the Velord uh, trunk, I guess you would say. Man, this thing is bad. That is cool, man. What year is this? Wow. That's when they made them, man. They don't make cars like this anymore, you guys. That is pretty dang cool. It was just purring as you were pulling in, too. That is cool. Is that the name of like a car club on the license? Yeah. The Estranged, I love it. Perfect name, man. It's all chopped. That windshield, they didn't come stock like that. You chopped the window, right? Yeah, four inches. Wow, that is gorgeous, dude. Good timing. <laughs> I was literally just talking about hot rods. Thanks for sharing, man, it's great. You got any social media or anything you want to plug for your no, your company? Right. Thank you. Though. No worries, man. I dig the Operation Ivy tattoo. That's that's a deep cut, man. I like it. Man, that was cool seeing all that history. I'm so glad the new owners put all those pictures up. And we are now currently heading west back to Gresham, biking right down the freeway or the highway, however you call it. Probably not the safest, but there's a pretty good sized bike lane. So, all good. The worst possible thing happened. And we're like five miles from Gresham. Now I gotta buy a tube and a tire. Got a nail right through it. Son of a gun, dude. Look at that. Yep, now I gotta buy a tube and a tire. Dang it, dude. And we're still like five miles from Gresham. Man, I might have to hitchhike. Find somebody with a truck. Dang it, dude. So embarrassing. But what are you gonna do? There's nothing I can do about it. I put my thumb out, no one's gonna stop. We still got about maybe three miles until we're back in Gresham. So hopefully I can get to Dick's Sporting Goods. At least buy a, uh, see if they can help me. At least buy a, uh, <laughs> what you might call it? A, uh, oh, I can't even think right now, I'm so upset. A patch for the tube and then just pump it back up. Cause I don't think it matters if there's actually a hole in the tire, as long as the tube's good. I will eventually need to replace the tire, but I think I might be able to get away with it. Just patching it for now. Dang it, dude, it's the worst thing possible is a nail. Yep, I'm gonna have to buy a new tube. I think we'll be okay on the tire. The guy on the phone at Dick said we could come down and check it out. So we're back here in Gresham. That was a long walk. It's about five, maybe 10 miles. Holy smokes. All right, just made it to Dick's and got the tire off. Luckily, it's got the quick release which made it somewhat easy and I just was able to pull the thing off, but I'm not sure if this is the tube. It says 27 and a half, 190 through 2.10, and this is 27 and a half by 2.10, so I think, it's, I think it's versatile. We'll see here in a moment. Dick Sporting Goods has got me back in business, guys. We just walked, oh, I don't know, seven, eight miles, kind of documenting it. And uh, this is actually, we bought the Creeper Cruiser too. That's what I call my bike. Nice. But they're getting me dialed in. I don't actually have to buy a tire yet, which we definitely need to come back and get a tire. I should do it all at once, but we can at least get the, the new uh, tube on here. And then they've got like different pumps and stuff. So you guys have been so good to me, man. Thank you so much for your assistance, man. We're back in business. Got the new tube. Luckily they had the pumps because these tires take a certain uh, tube or you know a certain tube and a certain pump in order to pump them back up but we're back in business gotta throw the tire back on and we're back to creeping that was wild at least we didn't go that much farther that was a good probably seven mile walk with the bike 
and I was hitching it for a minute. No one would, no one would stop, which I don't really blame them. But yeah, I'm gonna get the tire back on and eventually get a new tire too, not just the two. But these guys are good, man. Dick Sporting Goods, thank you so much for your great assistance and originally buying the Creeper Cruiser here last year. Wow, that was uh, quite the journey. And I was telling the guy helping me, you know what, it could always be worse. It could have been raining or just way out and who knows where land. But we got the tire, so. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it on the new bikes. And the reason why I had to come here and not just go straight home because it's got a different valve. So I need to buy the pump piece. I think all the new pumps come with the double the double piece where you can do the regular valve stem or the regular or the the new one but yeah we're back in business i definitely got to get a tire i can't believe that went right through there but yeah we're all greased out now but we're back in business thanks to dicks all right i gotta get some lunch i'm i'm very hungry now all right we're all back in action I'm gonna go find a spot to post up and have some lunch speaking of bikes all these folks are coming through enjoying the bike ride or you know the day on their bikes you guys got quite the crew nice yeah, 8 by 10 color glossies right <laughs> I'll sign them for you too All right, we're back in business. Just stopped off at AMPM too and got me a large iced coffee. Got me an iced one this time. I was thirsty, even though I've been drinking that water. I needed a little sugar boost, but boy, what a, <laughs> what a ride. At least my bell still works. Yeah, thanks again to the good folks at Dick's Sporting Goods. Let me use the pump. Definitely gonna have to go back and buy a tire from them very soon, probably tomorrow. And uh, that little adapter piece for my tire. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start carrying my pump with me in my pack, or maybe even get a mount and mount it to the side of the Creeper Cruiser there. That was worth it. It was still worth it. I had fun, it was a good day. That's going to do it for today. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. That'll dial you into being a creeper today. You can also ring that bell that way when I creep. You guys will be the first to creep. And if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. Till next time, creeper out for now. Peace.